Well, China's President Xi Jinping issued some new threats against the rest of the world this week, fresh on the heels of the nation's Communist Party celebrating its 100th year in power. She says anyone who, quote, tries to bully or enslave us, that's China, will face, quote, bloodshed. Beijing is now doing more than just talking. Listen. We're seeing an arc of instability because of Chinese aggression from India in the south to South Korea in the north. You know, Chinese officials are talking about taking great parts of, of Russia away, also parts of Tajikistan. Xi Jinping's thought that he should be the only ruler in the world, that basically no other country has sovereignty. We're joined by refi retired four-star general and Fox News senior strategic analyst Jack Keane. General, happy belated July 4th to you. Thanks for taking time for us this morning. We appreciate it. Um, so she has long operated under this principle that the only thing that really matters in terms of the Communist Party's power is maintaining this sort of economic hegemony in the region that has slowly over time grown into economic hegemony um, across the world. Is this still his motivating principle now? Yeah, I mean, what, what Xi is seeking, certainly, and, and we've discussed it before, is regional hegemony as well as global hegemony. He fundamentally believes that his autocratic capitalism, which is the name that drives his economic system, will win out over democratic capitalism. And, and as a result of this, he's, he's much more repressive at home uh, than his predecessors have been, and even uh, much more so than he was just a few years ago. And he's considerably more assertive abroad as well. I mean, his social compact with his people is simply this. You can have economic prosperity. You can take advantage of your personal attru attributes and participate in their economic uh, system of autocratic capitalism. But the social compact is you must submit completely to the control of the Chinese Communist Party. They dominate and control their lives. And that's the social compact. And that, that is why this speech that he gave is, while, while he was certainly bombastic, and full of bluster, particularly when it came to our adversaries, that speech is mostly about nationalism. And, and it's mostly designed for his domestic audience. He wants their willingness to submit to the control of the Chinese Communist Party, and so far he has it. Hmm. General, that's not the only hot spot uh, we're dealing with right now. On Friday, we handed the keys to Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan. Yesterday on Fox News Sunday, Congressman Mike McCall says it's troubling. Listen. We're going dark in Afghanistan, and there are going to be consequences long term to this. And at the end of the day, Mike, when we fully withdraw, mm -hmm. the devastation and, and the, the killings and women, humanitarian crisis, fleeing across the border in Pakistan, President Biden's going to own these ugly images. Add to that, General, the commander in Afghanistan, Scott Miller, saying that the security situation is deteriorating and we could be headed for civil war. Your thoughts? Yeah, we're pretty much on that, on that path. I mean, what, what's really happening here? When we pull out our, our intelligence, and that's the system of intelligence, as well as the platforms, particularly drones and others, to be able to know where the enemy is and what the enemy's doing, a lot of that for the Afghan security forces is now gone. And the second thing that we have pulled out and stopped, and this is extraordinarily decisive, this is what President Ghani was talking to President Biden about. And I spoke to President Ghani the night before he spoke to our president with some other people as well. And I've had multiple phone conversations with him. What he wants is U.S. air support to hold back the advance of the Taliban. The problem is we don't have those, that, that capability in country anymore. It has to come from outside the country. But here's what will happen. The Taliban is now taking districts around the country. They are avoiding going into major cities and the provincial capitals. They will not do that until the United States leaves. Then they're going to mass. They'll no longer be an insurgency. They will be an army. And they will mass and go into those cities. And that is when they would be so vulnerable to airstrikes and to our drones spotting where they are and what are they doing. And I'm hoping that the Biden administration will figure out, along with the Pentagon, how to provide some of that air support for them, even though it's coming from outside of Afghanistan. If it doesn't, I think we'll see these major cities just start to fall and they'll consolidate their defenses around Kabul, et cetera. 
And keeping the airport wow. open is, is the only way the government will stay in power. If that airport starts to be threatened, everybody's going to leave. And it'll be an ugly situation, to be sure, mm -hmm. for the Afghans to deal with and for the Americans to bear witness to. Especially tragic considering the number of American lives lost during the last two decades, the trillions of dollars in taxpayer money that has been funneled to that country. Uh, General Jack Keane, thanks so much for taking time to us Thank for you, us General. today. We appreciate it. Yeah, great talking to you.